Hey everybody, uh, we're doing a um, special guest one shot with our guest Todd from Hexpress. Hello, Todd. Hey, Todd. Hello. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Yep. He's uh, thanks for having me. our very first guest on our channel, and I want everyone to go and do uh, the whole clicking on our links and subscribing to his stuff. He's trying to get to a thousand subs, and he's real close. But we're going to start tonight with character creation, and we are playing Troika. 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 Not a Russian cart pulled by a horse. It is not a Russian cart pulled by a horse, nor is it a sort of a, a sort of a collective leadership. It's just it's the city in the setting. Never mind. Is that an option in this game to be a sentient cart pulled by a Russian horse? Uh yes. No. Mm -hmm. But we'll have, to, we'll have to come up with the, the archetype. That'll be part two when we do this again. Yeah, had you yeah. had you not just mentioned it, we might have come up with something before now because it's a pretty fluid game. <laughs> but since we are playing it new, we're going to generate our characters for you live on screen, and it's a super simple process. So, everybody who is playing, that would be Frakes, Toker, Matt, and of course Todd. Uh, give me a D3 roll and record the total. Yeah, this is going to go about as well as Pathfinder. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, excuse me, D3 roll, add three, and record the total. Ah, oh, well, that's much better. All right. Still the Five. least you can get. <laughs> so sorry, we're adding three to the total? Yep, D3, add three. Got it. This is for skill, and I got five. This is the skill stat, yes. Oh, okay. So All go right. ahead and write down that number, or are we multiplying it by anything or subtracting nope. anything? This is your skill stat. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm a skilled Bella. Okay. Do you roll 2D6 and take the best... Or no, two D three and uh, <laughs> you must have rolled a one, huh? Yeah, like, okay. I mean, the, it's a pretty high chance that I'll roll that again. But thirty three percent, you know. All right, so what did everybody get to before we move on? Oh, five, I got four, five, four, five, and also token. five. All right, so we're all we're all mostly average. All right, uh, I think the next uh, thing on the line is rolling two D six and adding twelve, and this is your stamina score. Ooh, yeah. Come on, no Jesus. whammies. <laughs> I'll take it. Twelve. I nailed oh. that one. Damn. So what do I do? I add twelve. Add twelve. Add twelve. All right, so twenty-four. That's Ooh. pretty good. So, yeah. all right. Literally yeah, the six best. and a one. So that gives me uh, nineteen. Uh, yep. That feels pretty good, but it's yeah. not. Yeah. It's no twenty-four. <laughs> Oh, sorry, right. I'm gonna crap on all of your dice rolls today. That's gonna be my my joy. Good, good. Whimsy, Franks. Whimsy. That's what we're going for tonight. Yeah, that is my whimsy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm not far behind our guest with a 22. Oh, okay, Ooh. that's pretty good. Uh, Franks, what did you get? Um, pulling up the rear with an 18. Okay, and for the last roll, uh, for at least for stats, give me a D6 plus six, and this is for your luck score. Come on, come on, baby. Six. Come on, baby. Lucky, lucky. <laughs> Ten, you should... Ten? All right. What'd you get, uh, Matt? You look very disappointed. I'm at an eight. Okay. Yeah, I rolled two. That's not so bad. You... <laughs> two you start... ones, a two, and a six. That's what I've rolled so far tonight. You want to roll low unless you're in combat. Yeah, that's or when, when you're building that's... your character, apparently. <laughs> right, or now. Or now. <laughs> or now. <laughs> All right. Okay. Since Todd is our guest, he gets to roll first. We're going to do two, two D, uh, D66 rolls for character archetype and let you pick the one you like better. You don't, you don't want to hear the, our luck roll? Me and Toker's luck roll? I don't care what the, you got. Okay. What is it? Okay. That's fine. So 11. 80. Thank you. I'm a 10. All right. I just thought we were following a pattern. I wanted to I follow the pattern. I was trying to, but you know. 
All right, so for those other rolls, I got 44 and 32. All right, 44 and 32. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 32 is the Thaumaturge, a uh, wandering miracle worker, and he's on page 20, uh, 32. No, like the sound of that. No, that's that's page fit. That's number fifty six on page thirty two. Duh, I'm a dumb person. <laughs> thirty two is the uh, journeyman of the guild of sharp corners. Oh, you got the assassin. Dope. Assassin and <laughs> it does sound cool. You got the assassin, yeah. And what was the other one you got? Forty. Forty four. Forty four. How would how would you ever get a forty on a D sixty six? Ah, let's see. Uh, questing knight is your second. Uh, Oh man, well, give, well, give me a minute to, to think over these while their folks are rolling. Uh, it right, seems well, like yeah, a difficult you, decision. You dwell on those and we'll go, we'll move on to the next person. Uh, Matt, go ahead and I'll just cycle around on my. All right. Uh, you. My first one got a uh, 61. 61. Let's see what that is. That is a thinking engine. That's the cart. Uh, right, <laughs> it's not the car. No, you you can choose centaur body with it. Ooh, you're making up. It's a it's a kind of a mystical robot. They use them to pilot golden barges. Oh, that's right, cool. So Sixty one is my first one. Let me try the second one. See what I get here. All right, this game is weird. It's a weird game. <laughs> you can be a Russian cart pulled by a horse. Yeah. <laughs> Using up all my sixes here. That's oh my. Boy. I just got a sixty-three, and that is the venturesome academic. The venturesome mm. academic. All right, move along. I'll check. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Ooh, Frakes. Spell random. I don't know about that. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Number one. Eleven. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, number eleven is actually pretty cool. That is the uh, Argent Giant of Cordia. Yeah. <laughs> That's fitting. And the second one is forty-six. Forty-six. Rhino Man. <laughs> the pure joy in your face <laughs> whimsical rhino man i like it um, I'm or it that. a giant yeah your dice are speaking to you i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna read up on those as you uh search okay all right lastly toker all right 41 41 have we gotten 41 yet uh, I believe 41 is Necromancer. Ooh. Oh, that's dope. Okay. I like that option. Let's see where we're at with this one. 14. Oh, I just Four. flipped them. <laughs> All right. 14 is the Kakogen. Ooh. It's got the word cock in it. That's uh, cool. Kakogen? C A C O G. Is it Kassogen? I don't know. I don't know the word. It's it's um cockagen and I know that because it is in the Gene Wolf book that I was telling you about, Book of the New Sun. They're aliens, basically. Yep. These look like yeah, from the description they are they're like creatures, grays with lamprey mouths. Yeah, they're creatures that are uh, born between worlds and uh get corrupted by those otherworldly influences into this art. Poof. <laughs> This is all cool. Okay. All right. Well, I will take a minute and let you guys decide, and uh, Toker will edit that minute out, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. I decided to go for the assassin type, journeyman of the Guild of Sharp Corners. All right. Sounds cool. Mm. I like your decisiveness, sir. Um, question. What is a spell at rank three? Uh, spell at rank three? Oh, it means um, you have... Whenever you are ca- rolling to cast a spell, you would add three. Basically, it's just three to the skill. To ca- oh, okay. Each spell is um, assigned a number, and that is your skill in casting that spell. It's random. Is that to roll for it? Uh, yep. Let's see. Where's the spell list? Uh, give me D36, which is a D3 as your tens place and a D6. <laughs> D3 is my 10th place and a D6. 
So that gives me a 35. 35. Wait. I'm sorry. Is this a D66 chart? I'm sorry. I was thinking of a different chart. What is it? What is it as a D66? 45. So I rolled a four on the tens one. Invisibility, page 62. Invisibility. Uh, right. It's like this character was made for you. Mm, Slide it up. Although I'm taking, I mean, it's the thinking engine. I decided to go with that. Okay. Since they both get one spell, and I want to try out the magic. So. Uh, and I have three to golden barge pilot in case that comes up. I don't know what that is. <laughs> but it's, um... If we have a golden barge, I'm your robot. Uh, let's see. Let's see what invisibility does here in this game. It costs three stamina to use the spell. Jesus. Yeah. Like spell spell use takes stamina. Yes. Um, the wizard turns their flesh into reflective crystal sheets. It is very uncomfortable. It makes you slight, <laughs> makes a slight shishing sh shishing sound as you move, but are uh, quite invisible and don't suffer from the usual limitations of illusions. Last for three minutes. For <laughs> Which you nois noisily return to your normal form, your to too dull and frustratingly opaque f flesh man. Boy, this is written very Britishly. <laughs> I think um, I think that suits a thinking engine quite well. Mm. Ah, I don't recover stamina by resting in the usual manner. Instead, you must spend a full rest period with a hot iron welding your skin back together with putty. For each hour of rest, with access to the right tools, you gain three stamina. <laughs> Glorious. Yeah, I think you're more like uh, I don't know, not necessarily a robot, but like uh, android, some kind of artistic android, like Bishop from Alien, maybe. That's what when it says the because uh, I can uh, I can hook my fluids to uh, recharge plasmic machines if I use my fluids. My delicious fluids. Yeah, I am always lightly armored, so that's a good thing. So suck it. <laughs> Oh. Has everyone else decided what they want to do? Oh. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Okay. Only because as I'm reading the necromancer, it's an obvious necromancer. But when I get to possessions, that's where I was <laughs> like, I need to play a necromancer because my possessions are dusty robes, which I guess don't do anything. Um, but I also have the skull of my master or a zombie servant or a ghost with whom you have developed a codependent relationship <laughs> look at your look at your skills <laughs> yeah healing which i thought hey i could be i guess maybe i could be a necromancer that could heal right maybe that's metagame a little bit mortuary science relationship counseling <laughs> uh, uh Spell is posthumous vitality, skeletal council, torpor, and I get sneak as a skill. So, a name I was like, I'm gonna be Cryptus, and my my zombie servant is gonna be Crypty. Okay. <laughs> I went with the Rhino Man. All right, as I expected. <laughs> Let's see, Crep Creptus, right? Yeah. K R E P T U S Creptus. All right, uh, let's see. Rhino Man. I, I I have not come up with a name yet. No hurry. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's difficult to think. I mean, what do you think of when you think of a rhino? Horn nose. That's what non rhinos think about. <laughs> Stunningly original as always. <laughs> you sound like me as a child naming dogs. Well, that'll be brownie, and that'll be that'll be wolf dog. Uh, yeah. That'll be Sir well, Barks a lot. His first name is Zedric. Okay. Zedric Horn nose. Okay. All right, Zedric. How about you, Matt? What you got? Um, it says I woke up without any memories of who I am or where I was. 
have no memory of my creation or purpose. So, um, I'm not sure what I name. I'm, I'm, let me give you a minute here. Okay. Uh, Todd, you. you got us a name I can use for this? I do. Sigurd. S-I-G-G-A-R-D. All right. See? He came prepared, Frakes. I got tons of assassins. He's a professional. Yes, <laughs> plus, he's a professional. I'm at best an amateur. At best. Okay. Well, I'm glad you didn't say I'm a talented amateur. <laughs> At best, on a good day. Let's we would have had that. to argue. I can be honest with myself. <laughs> That's a good thing. Um, hmm. Are we just waiting on me? Yeah. Yep. Oh, shit. All right. Just do um, 8675309. Okay. Uh, my friends call me 309. <laughs> Let's do that one. That's what's written on my arm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what you'd you forgotten go. was your real name was Transylvania 65000. Oh, damn it. <laughs> damn. That would have been a good one. I'm going to switch. You can be 8675309 and I'll be that. <laughs> oh, All right, what are we going to do? Write our skills down on this little thing? Yeah, uh, basically, you add your skill total to these numbers under your advanced skills whenever you're attempting to do something and you roll under that number if it's a non-opposed roll all right so if it says it says i have three on something i put that under rank plus my skill right so it makes that a seven yep got it picking this up pretty good hmm. i have skills in astrology but if you um Push one of my fingers back, it shoots out a little ticket. It tells you your horoscope. <laughs> okay. You're you're already coming up with little flavor flavorful yeah, additions. Matt, Matt's in the spirit of whimsy. Things. Whimsy. I've got what, a what's what's a a piss toilet? It's a mm -hmm. toilet that you piss in. Oh a piss, piss toilet fight. A, a oh. piss toilet. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. a gun. All right. Got it. That makes more sense. <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't know. Piss toilet fighting might be fun too. <laughs> that makes so much more sense. I'm uh, sorry I said that. Okay, it makes yeah, it makes about <laughs> as much sense as you do usually. That's, yeah. All right, y'all ready? This. Yes. Uh, okay. <sighs> Trying to figure out Thank what I machine. would use um, uh, relationship counseling for but I guess the story will just unfold and that yeah. skill will, you, you will... find the uses for your skills like in this game apparently whenever you use a skill successfully you put a tick mark by it and at the end of the adventure you roll to see if you would gain more skill in it oh cool that's yeah. cool what what, are the, what uses are the possessions uh, generally they're your gear and like because I have a undersized spear and a tiny useless helmet. <laughs> the undersized spear is what you fight with. You'll see that there's a a skill for spear fighting. I have a soldering iron. But I've also got a horn that functions as a dagger. Uh, the, basically, the um, do you have a skill for that? No. Aside from, I mean, run and strength. I, mean, I would guess maybe that's his natural weapon, right? That's the horn on his yeah. face. Yeah. There you my, go. My face horn. Do we need to roll a 2D whatever for coins? Um, if you want, yeah. We're, we're, we're probably just going to like kind of ignore uh, the usual encumbrance. Since that's, right. that seems a lot of bookkeeping tonight. 2D6. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> Matt wants to. He likes the, the bookkeeping aspect. Oh, yeah. he loves, he loves and it. And coin. Uh, I got five silver bits. All right, I'll, I'll roll two since we're going to be left out of the money pool. Everybody Good. starts with the same basic package in addition to what their character gets. 2d6 silver pence, a knife, a lantern, a flask of oil, a rucksack, and six provisions. What's 2d6? Right, six. Okay. Eight. Eleven. Nice. Right. Yeah. Okay, so everyone has decided on what they are playing, and um, I'll let everyone describe their character in turn. Let's start with the going backwards, Toker. 
<clears throat> okay. Um, oh, I, that, so if you've listened to the show, the live shows, Munkar was the name was based off the Death Stalker villain. <laughs> um, Creptus is going to be visually based off. The Death that Stalker. Guy. Okay. Yeah, he's got he's, he's got a weird uh, face tattoo on one side. He wears these old dusty robes. He's 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 completely bald. He looks like a a villain in a in a poorly made Dungeons and Dragons movie, which that actually exists. Um, <laughs> Please tell me that your tattoo moves from side to side. It, yeah, it totally just slowly creeps across the face constantly. No gameplay mechanics there. Um, Crypty is a um, a zombie companion who he dresses like a um, like a butler from a TV show in the nineteen eighties, like right. the coattails, the butler suit, the the weird hat. And he just carries my stuff around for me, and his name is Crypty. Okay. Yeah. Um, Frakes. Zedric Hornnose is a rhino man. He looks about what you would expect a rhino man to look like, except he's got a tiny, useless helmet, carries an undersized spear, and um, he had a tabard, but it's all bedraggled and useless. You can't tell what standard it used to to bear. Hold on. Holy shit. This is just one of the guards from the Robin Hood animated movie, isn't it? It is. You're right. That's exactly (laughs) who this is. I had no other frame of reference to work from (laughs) (laughs) using what I've been given. Robin Hood, little John, running through the forest. Disney, Disney, Disney. Disney. (laughs) Sorry. It's my other half of my life. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you, Zedric. Would you have any other pertinent details to add before I move on to Mr. Copyright Infringement over here? He likes gambling. He's really good at gambling. Okay. He's got, a, he's got a knuckle dice he that he, he likes to throw. He's he's also really myopic because, you know, <laughs> rhinos. Very tiny glasses. Really bad eyesight. All right. Uh, Matt, uh, who's, your, who's your character? Uh, My character is 8675-3... Zero nine, which is different than an O. Um, it's, he's a he's a thinking machine. Recently woken up. Um, he's roughly humanoid, two arms, two legs. Except he has a third arm that moves around inside him and pops out where he needs it to. Um, and it is strictly for soldering, which is how he heals himself, puts himself back together, or healing others, sort of. With also with the soldering iron, <laughs> so we'll get those wounds closed. But uh, mind the screaming. <laughs> That's right. He's also um, he, he can turn invisible and does so quite often. Fortunately, to the point of where he passes out. <laughs> and he's a uh, famed Golden Barge pilot. All right, there you go. I don't know what that is. And lastly, but not least, we have Todd. What are we playing? All right, Sigurd is the kind of gaunt, almost emaciated figure of an Aeon Flux character. He's got close cropped blonde hair with a sort of uh, very uh, exaggerated widow's peak. Wears his you know black cloak or his black clothes with pride and distinction. All right, and you are a what was your what was the type again? Journeyman. Journeyman of the sharp corners. Oh, okay, that's right. Okay. And with him, all corners are sharp, especially those on his face and body. Right. Okay. Okay. And if we're ready to begin, his hair is sharp. <laughs> yeah, just. Yeah, do you have like, absolutely weird, that, that weird, widow's peak and uh, the weird you know, 90s cut. like Wolverine hair? Just like, <laughs> before you jump in, sure, sure. I, mine, mine comes with basically a companion, and I found stats for Living Dead. Mm-hmm. Is that how that would work? I would just use those stats, or is it kind of up to you? Um, I think you're supposed to use uh, henchman stats. If I ah, think. okay. I, was, I thought I saw henchman earlier, but I, I guess I might have glazed over it. Yeah, I think you use a henchman stat for that one. All right. Well, I'll go dig in for henchman stats then. Okay. All right. 
Okay, so let's get this party started. <clears throat> we begin our tale where bright golden sailed ships make ports on a starry sea of endless possibility. A mystical portal can spring up at any moment's notice to send you hurtling off on a wild adventure. Troika. Fantastical Troika. Notorious Troika. And even beautiful, from certain angles, Troika. Uh, we smash cut, since we're doing the in whole in media res thing, to one of the unfashionable lower layers of the city, where gray smog hovers in the air, and a busy people scurry dourly down grim cobbled streets, the industrial district. We arrive on the scene as our group of sphere hopping wanderers has found themselves in the middle of a mix up. A woman in rust red robes and a similar colored habit says, what do you mean you're not from the temp agency? She is wearing um, welder's goggles and she's got a, a strange holy symbol around her neck, uh, an enormous iron cog with three smokestacks coming out that gives off little puffs of smoke, sooting up her face slightly. Oh, you're, <laughs> I thought you were just really big. She says to the assembled heroes, you guys. Heroes? Us. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I'm using, I'm using Big. it in the... <laughs> Big, you know. She, 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 she puts her arms on her, um, on her side and looks frumpily out at you guys and says, she looks at, at her, her companion, several other of these nuns in, in the rust red robes. She's like, did any of you call for these people? They're not our scabs. Uh, you find yourselves amongst a group that ha identifies themselves as the Sisterhood of Holy Industrial Servitude. One of them, a less belligerent looking one, wanders up to you and says, oh, I'll handle this. Hello, I'm Sister Hildegard, conveyor belt. How are you doing today? Hello. <laughs> Um, I understand that you got a message to meet he us here. Is that what happened? Uh, I, turn, yeah. I turn and look to my crew. Is that what happened? You guys got a message that you are needed for a very important mission that would pay quite well in, in the lower part of the city. But uh, you also happen to be standing near a group of um, poorly dressed uh, school children at the time when you got it and they also got a message you're guessing something got mixed up in the crossfire i'll point out that i <laughs> gave myself the message and a little piece of paper will pop out of my chest and i'll pull it off again and show it to everyone explain to them that i'm a reader of the stars <laughs> well we don't need a reader of the stars the, the other one bellows over the uh the, the nicer one's shoulder she turns to her and says, please, Sister Ignacia. This is Sister Ignacia of Five Eighths Wrench. She is um, very concerned about our current plight. The current plight, incidentally, to, to which she is speaking, uh, you can see over her shoulder behind her. There is um, just a mountain of sand coming out of uh, an orphanage, just, just pouring out of the door. Uh, the the uh, the nicer of the two nuns says we've had a very very rough morning. The sign on the on the wall of the orphanage reads Our Lady of Perpetual Overtime, Hard Labor, Pre K Orphanage, and Rat Poison Factory. Nice the play. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say what you need is a lot of shovels or water to go along with this fine beach you've created here. What we need is our workforce back, she says. And she points to um, an area where a couple of the other nuns are kind of like got something off to the side there. And you, once you see one of them clear, you can see, clearly see that there are a bunch of um, a bunch of children there. They're all like ages five to nine. But they're all sort of standing there, open face, open mouth, not open face. They're not sandwiches. Um, in this oh. world, anything's possible. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, there's some, <laughs> of the, some of them are part sandwich on their father's side, but that's that's neither here nor yeah. there. 
can tell by the crust being gone, right? That they're children <laughs> sandwiches. They're, they're only half sandwiches. Yeah, yeah. Just just a kid with a piece of bread and a lettuce and like an yeah. olive. My uh, mother was soup. <laughs> <laughs> Hat like that should come with a bowl of soup. Oh, jeez. Okay, but anyway, but <laughs> these kids look particularly odd. They look faded almost, like their their um, their color is gone. Even in this drab part of town, they look especially gray. They don't do anything anymore. They've just been sitting there. <laughs> and you can see one nerd, one of uh, the nuns got one of the gray children over his shoulder and, and is vigorously paddling it. The kid is just not respond, responding, just flopped over her knee. Uh, the kid, the kid has an eye patch, you see. And a lot of these kids have a lot of um, uh, injuries from from uh, you're guessing industrial accidents. You see one kid with a peg leg, one kid with a hook. Have you tried feeding them gin? <laughs> I hear that's what keeps the workforce going if they're under ten. <sighs> We've tried many things, but we just don't know what to do. But <laughs> and there's gin to be had. I'll have some. <laughs> well, you're gonna have to get inside the orphanage, of course. That's where we keep it locked up. And this sand is this... still just constantly coming out. Yeah, or... it's, cu- it's, cu- it's pouring out into the streets, just filling the street. We don't know what's wrong with these children. Um, what's wrong with your sand? <laughs> We don't know where the sand is coming from either. All we know is that we've missed hours and hours of work. Oh. The um, the nun who is uh, looks like she's got a more gentle persuasion says, "Yes, we have had a little a hard day, and we want the children to be better, of course, and we want them to be able to access, of course, their beds and things. But you know, um, rat poison still has to be made." And uh, hiring orphan scabs is a little bit of a difficult prospect. There's a big demand this time of year. Your first mistake was hiring orphans. I find that the undead, it's okay, Crypty, you can put me down now. The whole time a zombie's been <laughs> holding me, like, in its arms, and he gently puts me down. I find that the undead are perfect for making poisons, and you don't have to feed them or give them beds to sleep in, or, or basically any of that nonsense, but I guess this is a... You know, hindsight and all that. Well, if you just employ the undead, then how are you going to get the children money to stimulate the economy? That's beyond the scope of this campaign, I believe. (laughs) (laughs) um, I'm all for children's right to work. The the kinder nun says, if you could wait here for a moment, and she huddles with her uh, fellow nuns for a moment. And comes back to you after a few minutes and says, <clears throat> we have um, a little bit of silver on us. If you would be interested in taking a look at our problem, you seem to be worldly types. Mm-hmm. I'll take a look for a silver. <laughs> and she says, yes. And she puts the bag of silver away and pulls one out. Hey, silver, of course. <laughs> He's not oh. our spokesman. You might be able to fool the robot, but you can't fool me. It'll take more than one silver to get me going to that place. Exactly. She I mean, says, I... we have 20 pieces uh, out here, and we could probably get you a little bit more once we're able to get to our um, our leader. Uh, Mother Supervisor Dorcas ran in there at the beginning of this crisis, and we haven't seen her since. Does she have the key to the gin? Uh, she has many of the keys, all of the keys, really. We don't know what the problem is, and we don't know how to... normally live in sand? No, this sand is very new. We keep a very tidy ship here, says the... uh, Just to get the parameters. We want to get to Dorcas, dead or alive, right? We just drag her out. Uh, If you can do something about all that, that would be great, too. (laughs) Oh, the sand. Yes. I'm not uh, sure if I'm equipped for that. As an afterthought, she points to the orphans and says... "Um, um, also, getting them back to work would be really great. I'll, um, <clears throat> is she still holding one of them? Huh? Is she uh, still holding one of them? Yeah, she's got one by the hand. Uh, so I'll, my little third hand that likes to wander around will reach out and touch it. I don't know how healing works in this game. I've got a heal skill. Yeah, I do too. I, I was know. wondering if I could do a heal skill to see what was wrong with them. Sure, you guys roll your heal to see if you can figure out what is going on. 
So I roll two d six, and I need it to be under your your skill. Oh, you okay. roll two, yeah, and you need it to be under your skill. So if your heal Add the is two together, yeah, his skill plus advanced skill, and then you roll under that number. So my skill's five, my healing's two, so I need to roll two d six and be under seven. Seven or under, yeah. Okay. Eight. <laughs> 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 Reach out I, and slap I need, it. I, my healing's two, my skill's four, so that's six, right? Yeah. So I need to roll a six or under? Yeah. I rolled a seven. <laughs> One over for both of us. Huzzah! <laughs> yeah. All right, so you guys investigate these uh, these children, these gray-faced children, and you're like... Definitely not zombies. Uh, they, they, they seem to have the, the general um, demeanor of zombies, but they are clearly still alive. Uh, you're guessing it might be some kind of um, some kind of possession, maybe, or it could be uh, cr- chromatic, <laughs> antichromatic chicken pox, something. <laughs> you you honestly it, don't know, but you know that uh, an impressive lie would really be helpful here. It looks a lot like anti-motion sickness from not doing enough work. (laughs) They're lazy. Children are always lazy. You hear one of the nuns says, that's what I've been saying for years. Oh, you've made a friend. You should should beat them more often (laughs) so their morale improves. All right, so I guess we've got to get through the sand if we're going to get into the building. All right. That's right. We gotta earn our silver piece. Okay. Your you've already got yours. Eight six you four three look. zero nine. You just have to look. <laughs> um, I'll take off my tiny useless helmet and start trying to scoop some of the sand away. Okay. <laughs> All right. You Not know, so you, useless now, is it, God Captain? You see, yeah, nope. you see, you see uh, Zedric teacupping the sand away from the. Uh, the doorway. Yeah, Sigurd will try to climb up the sand avalanche. Okay. Is it coming out of a uh, all the all the windows and doors in the place, or uh, where's it like coming? It's like just from? the lower floor. Okay, if I climb up the sand, can I maybe jump or reach on my tiptoes, reach uh, a second story window of some sort? Yes, uh, you can. You climb up the sand and give me a give me a skill check for. Jumping up there. Let me see. What, is, what do we have that's relevant? <laughs> I've got climb. Okay, well, Groovy. That's, that's great. Sounds that about seems right. perfect for this <laughs> situation. It's almost perfect for this situation. Yes. <laughs> this is the DM's call, though. I rolled <laughs> exactly what I needed. I, I rolled a six, and I needed a six. All right. Yes. You hey, see, that's how you play this. Scamper up the sand, leap up to the window, and, sc- and scoot inside. Uh, um. it, Yep. I will help anyone else up uh, that needs to go up. I am very strong. It's one of my skills. Okay. I will let strength substitute for climbing if in a pinch. Yeah, I've got uh, I got a strength of one. That means I got a, well, it's five, I guess, with uh, my skill. So I'd have to roll a four or, un- or under. Well, what if I boost five you under. with my skill? We can, need another can we work this. together? Yes, you can. Uh, and if you have a piece of relevant equipment, that generally adds a plus one to the roll of whatever you're doing. So, yeah, three hundred nine came with a soldering iron, or so I can that, turn invisible. Yeah, <laughs> the, sand, the sand will never see it coming. <laughs> the, well, you just solder it so that it's glass. Then we can shatter it. <laughs> okay. Boom. So right. I will I will uh, help eight six five three zero nine up into the window three oh nine I will right. help three oh nine up to the window strength I was I don't, I've never rolled this good ever so okay. I don't need to um, <laughs> <laughs> it's all yeah. high on the, all right, the thinking engine oh. flails about wildly while you try to push him up but what did you get I rolled a six under seven all right um, you flop <laughs> into the eat. second floor window next to Sigurd. There we go. There goes my stealth. <laughs> How about yep. you, Crypty? Cryptics. Uh, so back to this henchman thing. 
Yeah. Um, it, maybe I shouldn't have picked this class because it seems like it requires a little pre-game work. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so hired help are willing to engage in combat. Each provide one initiative token to the stack. So that's something we'll need for for him for initiative. Okay, I got one. Henchmen share a single color token, and when the henchman token is drawn, the GM determines who acts and what they do. Uh, the GM should take the wishes of the players under advisement, blah, 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 blah. So that, that's part one of henchmen. And then you scroll through this book a little bit down. Um, to 7.10, another uh, section called henchmen. <laughs> Henchmen are created as you would a monster. Oh, okay. With truncated abilities only covering their essence. They are their own people with their own motivations and not just pieces of equipment. It is up to the GM and players to flesh them out or not, as the case may be. That's basically all it says about henchmen. So what I'm thinking is, is that, and I don't know, I don't, I'm not trying to metagame and, and pick something powerful with this undead thing, but, um, if I go down to undead, uh, sorry, living, living dead. Their skill is six. Their stamina is twelve. Their initiative is one. Their armor is zero. Uh, damage as a weapon or modest beast. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but um, it's on the on the interior cover. It says the beast. Okay, so I don't think that seems like overpowered right or because lizard man right underneath it's better in most regards except for stamina um, um let's let's go with uh just record this for me give me a let's do skill five stamina eight initiative one and one point of armor sorry i dropped my dice and nearly knocked my head off with my attached headphones what, what did you say? I said, let's do skill skill five, stamina eight, uh, initiative one, armor one. Stamina eight, uh, initiative one, armor one. Yeah. No luck? No, the monsters use their skill for their luck score. Oh, okay. They're built slightly differently than player characters. Okay. Um, but that doesn't, that's so skill is the same as mine, so he can't help me climb up any better than I can help myself climb up. That's the only reason I was wearing. So, see if the zombie can just push me up there, but he's he's no stronger than I am. Uh, I let him give you a plus one by boosting you. Okay. Uh, is there any way that I can also help boost? No, I mean, if, if you're still there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm waiting to get everybody up and then I'll get up myself. I thought you, I thought you climbed up to the window or no? No, I boosted you up. Oh. He basically tossed you through the window since you were flailing so bad. Yeah. Sigurd uh, climbed up. So I'm up there. Yeah. Yes. Now. Oh. All right. <laughs> Eight. <listening> now. Yeah. <laughs> I'll <Right>. take ten. <laughs> take ten. Oh, wrong game. Oh, God. Still failed. I also failed to help him with an eight over, or, yeah, eight over seven. Maybe it would be best if I peruse the bottom floor here around the uh, look around the building for. All right. If is someone has a rope, I can tie it, it around robot guy here, and uh, maybe you can climb up easier that way. Hmm. Let's see. That's your knife. All right. Sack. Hmm. I've just seen if your base equipment came with rope. Sorry. <laughs> I looked, and it doesn't seem to, and I don't have any. But someone oh, else no. has got some. They could throw it up here. I'm I happy uh, to... reach into Crypty and uh, unravel miles of his intestines. Miles. <laughs> Just miles of it. Just Using miles of intestines. It's, sorry, this is an end joke on our stupid show. It's right, Just like, uh... Uh, I, was, I was thinking Machete used it in that movie to repel down a building. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. He did. Let me describe the room that you... Uh, that Sigurd and no. eight six seven five three nine happen to be in. You are in a um, a large communal bedroom with a lot of um, little beds for children. Um, they have very thin blankets on them, uh, sort of a very f almost flattened pillows. You can tell that the uh, the mattresses are cheaply made. The beds, however, are neat as a pin, except for two or three of them. 
uh, which you see us are there are some books on the, the the messy beds. But yeah, there's stuff to be had in here to use. Do we know if in this game we uh, know how to read by default or not? Uh, I'd say yeah. All right, so Sigurd will go over and flip through the books, particularly looking to see if any of them have a cutout with a little bottle of gin inside. <laughs> no, you you do see. Um, they seem to be, of course, all children's books. Um, one of them is called Joni and the Pumpkin Soldiers. One is the Happy Sabertooth Llama, uh, Demon Hunter Sweetie Bear and the Baleful Blood Sausage, and one called Little Bug's Big Sandcastle Adventure. And the books are all slightly warm to the touch, as if someone had been sitting on them. <laughs> Beard. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, he takes particular notice of the one, whatever, the bugs in the sandcastle. All right. Is that one warmer than the others, or have any other signs that the other books don't have? Um, you pick it up and investigate it, and once you start flipping through it, you see that it's uh, utterly blank. But yes, it is much warmer than the other ones. <sighs> All right. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, down below on the floor, on the ground floor, I've quick. had, I've had a, a, a fucking epiphany. Sure. And I don't know why I didn't think of this before because it's one of my favorite movies. Sure. This is I'm Swiss Army Man. <laughs> my zombie is is Manny from Swiss Army Man. <laughs> so like I need to use him like the intestine thing, kind of a joke, but maybe that's, that's what it. a necromancer would do. So okay. The intestines are rope. I can use his stomach to hold water when we're trekking across the desert. Uh, you know, his mouth could be a can opener. <laughs> um, so yeah, when that happened, I got very excited for my character. But no, I will. I will try and open his stomach if if I still need to get up there and use his intestines as rope. All right. Uh, sh- uh, sh- while you guys are investigating the room, you see um, uh, uh, a sick, sickly, um, sort of squashy tube flop <laughs> into the window. If, if necessary, I could just throw your zombie in through the window and we can dangle his intestines like rope. Either way. We use him as a grappling hook. Will he grab onto I'll, something? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll throw him. He'll grab onto his 309 <laughs> right, and right. we'll climb up his intestines. Ba- backing up a bit, you hear, <laughs> and you see the zombie come uh, pole vaulting through the window like, like a spear. He lands on the room and start, and grabs on a couple of the children's beds. You see, however, he is trailing uh, a, a floppy, gooey intestine behind him. So uh, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll steady him and uh, glance out the window as my third hand strokes his face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, make your climb with your plus one. I'll clap. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Two ones. All right, yeah. you're up there. You you see the necromancer now, more in his element, shimmy through the window. <laughs> That's what I needed my element <laughs> and right man how about you um i will substitute my strength for climb yeah. can i use the intestines as well sure mm-hmm. was that also a plus one yes oh the, it would be under so as a minus one right or no it's four four under eight it essentially makes whenever you use a, a something that adds to your skill, you basically add it to the skill for that. To the skill, you're still rolling the same thing. Under. You're still rolling under. Yeah, yeah. All it's right, all so backwards. everybody's in there. Good. I didn't realize yeah, the window was like an hour. such an opportunity. Uh, <laughs> well, I think we're just learning the the rolls and how they work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know, I know. And it's also not the window that's the problem. It's the mountain of sand that you have blocking <laughs> the entrances. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you're all together. Uh, yes. Sigurd, are you pointing out the, the weird find that you've made? Yeah, I, I toss the book to whoever seems the most, I don't know, weird or magically inclined. Well, only one choice there. Goes up in the air. <laughs> no fight, you. Not the Books. rhino. <laughs> Books <laughs> never touch the stuff. And just let me finish sewing up old uh, Crypty's stomach here. And <laughs> I guess I'll take it. I mean, I've got astrology. That's about as close as I've got to something mystical. All right, I hand it to Roboto. There we go. Mm. I'll um, Domo. take a look at it, and my uh, my third hand will kind of scan it like Braille. All right, roll under your roll your skill for um, astrology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So that was six, and I rolled a nine. Okay. Five and four. Incidentally, generally, second sight is the skill you use for um, detecting magic and looking at magic things, by the way, in case, you, in case any of you have it. Just, what is uh, it? Second sec- sense? Second sight, yeah. Could have had it, but I decided to go with invisibility. Well, then you can just try to do it on skill alone, but uh, that be, might be difficult for you. <laughs> tonight, yeah. I, I, I've been rolling in the 75th percentile most of the night. So <laughs> let me try something again or let somebody else. I mean, if you can try it untrained, everybody can at least give it a shot. Yeah. Oh, can we? Come on, Frakes. I'm checking my newly printed assassin's license to see if it says anything about orphanages and workhouses. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what do we roll to read? That makes sense. You don't have it, so you just roll against your skill. Not so much to read, but just that the book is warm and it's blank. Yeah, oh, but at the title of the book has to do with sand, which matches our or the, the circumstances here. Right, right, right. Um, so we can just roll our skill flat? Yes. You can oh. just roll your skill flat. That was a terrible idea. Nope. I got it. I, I meet my skill of five that's, for five. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Roll under just means meter. Not oh, meet. meet or under? Yeah. I'm still been over every time, but I'm just right. for future reference. So, <laughs> uh, Kreptus, the necromancer, you begin then fo- uh, focusing your, 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 your inner eye on this thing. Inter- investigating it for for arcane tampering, and indeed, you vi- you eventually um, feel that there is a an aura coming off of it. And the more you look, the, the brighter the aura it seems. You can finally, at some point, you see two um, vapor trails of of magical energy trailing off in two different directions: one out the window you just came in, and one further into the orphanage. I'll uh, look out the window to see if I can see how far that one goes. All right, you uh, you peer out the window and you you squint uh, in the dim light of the smoggy streets, and you can see that the the vapor trail of arcane energy uh, ends uh, sort of hovering around the head of one of the grayed out children. Hmm. I'll let the was- everybody else know that. It was it was the same one that uh, we were interacting with, sort of, as far as or one that the nun picked up, or no? Uh, no, it's just one of the ones. Uh, let's see, this random. one. This one has a hook for a hand. A hook hand. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Never trust, trust a hook-handed kid. Nope. Can't <laughs> trust him. Or or a one-eyed kid. Or a kid with a pit. Or kids in general. Just don't just, trust just children. Don't trust children. Whimsical, Frakes. Whimsical. Yeah. So Whim- just to reiterate, the, the book's title is Little Bugs Big Sand Castle Adventure. Where is it? Where does the other one go? It just disappears deeper in. Is there a doorway? Yeah, it, wall? it goes out of the doorway to the communal bedroom here. In further into the uh, orphanage. Well, I do need to look at the rest of it to be able to earn my silver piece. Well, you're not seeing it. Only uh, yeah. Well, he said he told us. You know, there was there was a vapor trail coming from the book to the child's head, and then there's a vapor trail going further in. For some reason, mm. this is making me think of Futurama, where where Fry wrote his, the book to get the, the brains to go away. <laughs> I'm the greedest. <laughs> <laughs> now I will leave for no reason. <laughs> so I wonder if something is eating the children's color through the book. We should follow that other vapor trail. So the trail. pages are blank, right? Yeah, the pages are blank. But do they have any rough on them like they used to have writing on them, or you, they, they're smooth? You, um, you feel like you can see that there's uh, obviously was something on them. You can see like vague hints of like bits of pigment, mm. um, blurry, dirty fingerprints from children. Like someone has thumbed through this greedily and um, un, with unwashed hands. This has been a book that has been read before, but now it is unreadable. I think following it the other way is the only way to solve this problem. Unless we want to kill us. Very unprofessional. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, Sigurd, I know that you're very sneaky. Would you like to scout ahead? Oh, you've noticed. Sigurd starts to kind of warm up, do a little quick calisthenics, a couple of jumping jacks. All right. Limbering up. 
Yeah. All right. Then he'll kind of do a cartwheel towards the door. <laughs> and, uh, oh, is, I'll, uh, let me see if I can be sneaky here. All right. He is incredibly dexterous. Most impressive. Uh, yeah. Boy, six, six on six again. I'm getting oh. lucky here. Uh, Okie dokie. Sigurd stealthily sneaks out into the hallway. Um, you see it. It goes off in two different directions, and there's another door on the other side. You're guessing probably. And in fact, no, you don't have to guess. It just says girls' dormitory on a little plaque. Um, you can see the stairwell going down a little bit to your right to the first floor. And then there's a hall heading um, to uh, on this floor, heading off to the left. Mm. I, I, I turn back to the other. Sigurd turns back to the others, makes a really complex set of hand gestures, and then says, clear. <laughs> <laughs> Which way are you going, Sigurd? Uh, always left. That's his motto. Or All which right. way is the vapor trail going? Well, he can't see it. Yeah, but is it, can I tell him? Oh, yeah. When you go hmm. up there, you can see that, that this one actually is going downstairs and disappears into the sand. Oh. Well, shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sigurd, um, I need you to make an opposed stealth for me. As you move to the uh, And that's where I fail. Seven on six. Okay. Oh, wait, I'm rolling a d20 like some kind of jackass. Uh, yeah, roll that d20. It oh, no, yes. it's, a, it's opposed, uh, so it's you add. So it would be six plus whatever you rolled. Oh, I see. So, wait, so, okay, so I rolled a seven and my skill is six. So, so that's, that's a 13. 13. Okay. And then I have to roll against that to spy you. All right. Um, as you're moving down to the left, you can hear um, sort of a... It doesn't sound like language, but it sounds like talking. Sort of a... <laughs> it sounds like language you would hear in a, in a, in a fever dream. Rhubarb, 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 rhubarb. <laughs> and whenever you peer uh, uh, further into the, uh, the, the murk of the hall ahead of you, you can see three round shapes just sort of milling around up there. Um, it's still... It, the hall is not lit, so it's difficult to tell what's what it is. But they okay, seem to be... he squats down really low. Okay. And then when he's got a good view of them, does sort of some reverse tumbles backwards <laughs> and then you know relay relays the, the round things and their appearances to the rest of the group. All right. Uh you, you get away from them unseen. You you get back to the group who are looking at the sand pile uh down the steps. And you you explain to them what you saw or what you didn't quite see. This sounds like a perfect opportunity for relationship counseling. <laughs> I will make my way forward. <laughs> right. Oh, please, please tell me that Sigurd is always serious too, especially when he's doing his little cartwheels and somersaults. And I mean, if you've ever seen Aeon Flux, they are nothing but deadly serious yeah. at all, all times. Top. Everything is serious and sexy all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy in the air on flux way, which is not sexy at all. Like, yeah. I beg to differ. <laughs> Just the kissing scenes that was like in the show alone was like, <laughs> what body horror is this? They're not even monsters. They're just kissing was the, people. That was the first show to show sperm on regular television. Was it, was it really? Mm -hmm. That's disgusting. <laughs> Wait, are you sure they didn't show one of the uh, Evangelion movies before that? I mean, I, I don't know. I just remember them talking about what they got away with. And it's the one where the girl has the clip in her back she can take out. So her lower half becomes floppy, floppy. And she's in love with a guy who's on the other side of the, the train tracks and they can't meet each other. So she would take that hook out of her back and lower it to a hole. And then the screen would just flash sperm for a second to, <laughs> to insinuate that the, them two had had sex through the wall. It's a, I love that show, but it I is fucking weird. I forgot about that. I, I, mean, I thought sure Dog that Boy was, was TV. I have like I have the fucking DVD box set. I know I need to fucking rewatch that. Yeah, show. Like, yeah. I, it's real quick, but yeah, they got away with it <sighs> anyway. I, okay. I would also like to watch that again. I think I've seen maybe three episodes of it. It's so weird. It's fascinating. <laughs> Anywho, refocus. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <It's a> game. <laughs> <laughs> so, Focus on sperm. No. So, so, Kreptis, you decide you're going to take the initiative and head around the corner oh, to see what's was, up. Uh, well, fuck it. Yeah, I'll do that. 
All right, you walk, you walk around the corner. Are you trying to be stealthy at all? I will attempt it since I've got a I've got a, a skill point in it. All right, well then give me an opposed one. All right. <laughs> can I not? Can I not be opposed? No. Uh, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. As you go sneaking around oh. the corner, you hear you you can hear the vo- uh, the voices that uh, Sigurd was talking about going. Hello, bully, 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 bully. The, as soon as you step on a creaky board, however, they go, and then Hold you a see two and a one. three round shapes start uh, stop to- stop their talking to each other and begin moving down the hall. As they get into the light coming from the the dim windows, you can see that they are essentially jack o' lanterns with arms and legs and spears. <laughs> they open their wide mouths and you can see that there's glowing green light inside and then they go and charge down the hall towards you guys. So let's do an initiative, shall we? It's a spear fight. Yeah, you, you guys that see. Works. All right, so how, how does initiative work in this? Uh, initiative, initiative is uh, pretty interesting in this game. You basically, oh. every, everybody gets two tokens. Every player character gets two tokens. My they zombie go- gets one. And your zombie gets one, so he's, he's going to be a goat token. Okay. And uh, and then you put in a initi- two initiative, or rather, an initiative card based on how many initiative cards the villain you're fighting gets, or initiative tokens. I'm using cards. So say these pumpkin soldiers get one each. So you have your three tokens for those guys, and you have the various tokens for you guys, and then those get shuffled up. And then there's one last token, which is the end of the round token. I'm using this demon token mm. to denote that. Okay. And uh, so basically what happens is you shuffle up and basically keep drawing and whoever gets drawn goes uh, until some till I draw the end of the round token. Mm. And then we shuffle up and start again. <laughs> so you might not be able to go on a particular round. You might go twice on a particular round. It's a, it's almost, it's, it is an entirely random thing, except for like the general dispersal of monster tokens increases how much. Gotcha. All right. Weird, they pose. weird system. It is a weird system and we're going to try it out. So let's go. Let's do it. Uh, party you said versus. These things look like jack-o'-lanterns? They're like jack-o'-lanterns carrying a spear. They have like, but their, their arms and legs uh, seem to be largely humanoid and kind of like, ceremonially armored. So, first in their order is Octopus. Octopus, that I believe that is you. Uh, Rhino. Yeah. That's Rhino Man. Are they close to me? Uh, they will be coming around the corner soon because you see uh, Kreptus <laughs> <laughs> coming around the corner first. I would like to charge them with my nose horn. All right. Is that a run? <laughs> or is there a specific combat role that needs to take place? Uh, basically, let's see, as far as I can tell, you get, you basically get one action on your turn, so, I don't know. Oh, God, he's talking really loud all of a sudden. So. (laughs) And I'm official new member of our party. Yes, yep. (laughs) Terrence's loud boyfriend. Yeah, my. (laughs) Hey, Jesse. Loud boyfriend. Uh, I don't think it actually. Please edit this part out. I'm so sorry. Now I'm going to leave it in all these awkward silences and uh, and talking. <laughs> loud, <laughs> loud boyfriend sounds like a weird indie band. <laughs> not not the noises that he's making, but the the words. Loud boyfriend. Okay, okay. So sounds like uh, an indie band. Here's how we need the little semen flash across the screen. <laughs> 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 I'm going to find that. It's going to be in this episode. Uh, please, <laughs> don't. please don't. Um, okay, so here's how uh, movement works. If you're moving more than four meters in a round, then you have to use the 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 round for movement. Okay. Am I moving more than four meters? Uh, if you're going to them rather than waiting for them to come to you, then yes. You can hold your action. I will hold my action until right. they get close enough for me to do spear fighting. Right, I'm putting this octopus token aside. You're holding, so... Next action, uh, that is, that is the, um, that is the 
pumpkin men. The pumpkin men round the corner, uh, and you can engage with them now as they attempt to. Excellent. I will spear fight with them. I'm supposed to roll over, aren't I? I'm supposed, right? You're muted. It's an opposed roll. Oh, good, good. Five plus my skill, so ten. Five, five plus your skill plus your whatever your combat skill is. So. Oh, oh, okay. So eighteen. What? My my spear fighting is eight. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that is that already factoring in your skill? Yes. So it's just my skill plus the. I'm very confused right now. It's really easy. Your skill is a base thing, and you add your advanced skill to it. Yep, yep. That that makes it eight. And that is what you roll. Yeah, that's that's it. That is so, the thing you add. So the, okay, so yeah. <laughs> what was so it? Eight plus what you rolled. Thirteen. Thirteen. Um, this is actually something I was didn't think would come up, but it's a tie. So if you want, you can break the tie with uh, a luck check. Is, and there's no other way to break the tie? Nope. Okay, then I roll under my luck now? Yes. And lower it by one. Afterwards. Right, right, gotcha. Okay, so I do roll under my luck. I'm lowering it from 11 to 10. Okay. And I rolled a seven. Okay, cool. Uh, then you do your damage as opposed to them doing damage to you. And that's just a D6 on the chart that's on the in the book. Yes? Yep. Ah, yep. oh, I didn't do that. Oh, because I don't All have right. a weapon. I have a knife. And I don't add anything to the D6. Uh, no. Okay. Um, do I add my tiny spear? My undersized spear? Does that give me a plus to the roll? No, you're using your horn. No, I was spear fighting. Oh, okay. Then uh, the spear does not, I don't think. I think it's okay, just like cool. random tools to do that. But Well, it's still a six on the die, which gives me an eight damage. Okay. Yep. It must be some way to add stuff, because I see that you can get it. It's possible to get a seven plus on the damage roll. Yeah, I think that's just like um, for situation th situational things and um, if you get like special items and things like that. But I don't okay. think I thought I read if you, if you have a sword fighting skill that you add that to your roll. No, like you don't I have. have you don't fighting. add that to your damage roll. Not your damage, but your. We're talking about the damage your... roll. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, what, what what are you using? Knife. Spear. Tiny spear. spear. Tiny spear. Uh, but undersized it, spear. Undersized spear, but it also is not the same as a spear. Well, that's very confusing. <laughs> it says it right there on the sheet. Not. Not where I saw it says undersized spear, but I don't see any other information about it. Let's see, undersized spear. No, I guess it does just regular spear. I'm sorry. I was looking at the horn thing. I'm so stupid. Okay, yes, yeah, so spear. <laughs> eight, yes, eight damage. So, um, the pumpkin. Your spear spears uh, the pumpkin pretty hard. The shell absorbs some of the blow, however. You puncture all the way through the spongy uh, gourd man. And we'll continue on to the next round. Let's, oh, wait. Um, yeah. Uh, another. That is my extra tokens. I don't want to, like, keep feeding monsters at you like some kind of dumbass. All right, bear, it's the bear's go. Hey, that's me. Um, okay, so when, when you spill in stamina, is it just, is how do you get that back? Uh, you can get it back by eating a provision um, or, yeah, or resting. Okay, I am going to attempt to cast Torpor. Uh, okay. As I see the jack-o'-lanterns running at me, I am going to go, ah! Um, die. <laughs> okay. I die. I have to roll under, right? You have to roll under your skill, yep. 
I almost rolled two sixes, which would have been oops. Yes, it would have. But I rolled a five and a six, which is well over. Yes, I'm afraid so. So I don't die. Um, Do I still lose the stamina? Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to lie next time. Okay. (laughs) You learn fast. Next, uh, bear again. I continue to scream. Try again. (laughs) For real? All right. Yeah. I don't, there's nothing else that I can really do. So I'm hoping my zombie can. Uh, Yeah. Oh, now we're talking. I just had a a big mod fart. Um, Rolling under. I'm rolling under my skill. Your spell. Your spell skill. Right? Spell is. So the it says one spell torp. So I add that one to it. Yeah, one. Plus and then my skill, skill is yes. five. So six. So six. So I got it a six. Okay. All right. What what does yeah. torpor do for you? Okay. So those who study the dead consider it necessary to, to develop a profound sympathy with their subject. How can you speak with the dead if you don't understand the dead? Torpor helps build post mortem empathy by causing the necromancer to temporarily die. Uh, bodily functions are halted. No food, water, or air is needed. They are, by most vulgar definitions of the word, dead. This spell lasts until ended by the wizard, who remains vaguely aware of their surroundings to the extent of being conscious of sound and movement, but not of what is being said or who is saying it. They will still take damage from bodily abuse while under the effect and can indeed become actually dead. So as they run up to me, I scream, I grab my heart like I'm having a heart attack, and I fall over dead, hoping they'll ignore me for the remainder of the combat. Okay, so you give them the old, I'm coming, Elizabeth, and fall over. Got yep. it. Okay, <laughs> next. Um, one of the guys go, uh, one of the pumpkin men charges across the, the way and takes aim at, let's see. Crypty is still standing next to me, but, you know. Okay. Let me roll a deep. Gets sand. All right. Um, this one charges towards the thinking engine. Thinking engine, defend yourself with your co- with your best combat skill. That's you, Matt. That's me. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> you actually became a robot for a second. Which one is my combat skill? I know I've got light armor. Uh, your, what what are your skills? I've got golden barge pilot, astrology, pistol fighting, which I don't have a pistol, healing, run, strength, cooking, invisibility. All right, then you would just make a skill a skill check. Uh, using your knife. Your, yeah, using your knife. knife fighting. All so, right. Roll two d six. Add your skill. So I rolled a seven, so 11. Uh, shockingly, you actually beat me by one. So <laughs> roll d6 for your knife damage. So I rolled a three, which that gives me that gives a two damage. Two damage, all right. Um, you slash at the pumpkin man. However, his uh, thick, pulpy hide deflects your blow. What the hell ever. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're bad. This is a non combat Why would they give me pistol fighting and no pistol? <laughs> <laughs> All right, dinosaur. This is you, Todd, I believe. All right. So, where is Sigurd in relation to the uh, pumpkin guys? Uh, one of them is fighting the thinking engine. One of them is fighting the rhino man. And those guys are pretty close to you, I'd say. Like, uh, and then there's one further away. So, one within, two within range, one at distance. All right. Is there any kind of flanking in this game? Is there any advantage to me uh, getting, say, behind the one that's attacking Roboto? Uh, there is actually. If you can sneak up on somebody, you get to do plus two. You add plus two to your damage roll. But um, right. uh, well, if it's possible to sneak, I was already crouched. I'll try now a angled forward tumble to roll behind the one that ran up to the thinking engine. All right, eight six seven five three zero nine. You're about to get some uh, help. 
So first door, is it oh. one thing or I think it's just one thing at a time, right? So this turn, I would just move. Is that? Uh, no, it's, it's like I said, uh, we're just going with like the old, um, like, uh, what do you call it? Um, a, like a standard. No, no. N like, uh, as far as like the vague kind of, um, distances. So there's like, no, I meant uh, that it, it I guess I was just, I've been trying to kind of read up on the, the combat rules. It looks like during your turn, you just do any one thing. And I think moving is one thing, no, right? So it says move. If the move is more than, oh, it's uh, more than, okay. So meters, this is, then okay. you would take, yeah, I got you. So I'm so, within four meters. Yes. Yeah, so so I want to just kind of try to get behind them and then use my knife guy, knife fighting skill to poke another hole in his pumpkin head. All right. Then yeah, you do go ahead and roll your, uh, let's see. Let me make sure I'm doing sneaks right here. Sneakiness. Sneaky sneak. Sneaky sneak. Ah, those are spells. I'll make a mean <laughs> stew, y'all, if we ever get to camp. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Items. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just going to let go with this here right now. Um, what are you looking for? I think since you uh, you are sneaking out when there's no opposed roll, so you just have to get under your mm. under your skill. For the knife or for the sneak? For the knife. Yeah, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just going to say that you are not spotted from your last time. You're basically, you never said you're breaking hiding, so. I got uh, exactly what I need. I got a six and I Six. All right, Boom. roll your damage and add plus two to the roll. This is just a, a 1d6 roll, right? Yeah, 1d6 roll, we'll add two. We got a four. So six. Oh, no, I, sorry, I rolled a four. I'm, I need to cross for it. So two on the knife and then two more, I guess, from that. So four altogether. Pretty good. Drop the dice. Good luck. Yeah, so he does a lot of complex moves and then just stabs forward. Okay. Um, I like it. Well, actually, that should be a six then. Like, I, I was I was assuming the damage roll. Whenever you roll damage, you the the roll is actually the d6. So it would add plus oh, two, okay. two. Well, I'm looking at that chart. So yeah. it says damage roll four, and then I went down to knife, and it says two. And if, and if you get plus two, that would go over to oh you're, six. Six. Oh, plus two. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. You got a plus right. two to the damage roll. So yeah. Oh, I got you. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. So now it's eight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yes. From um, the sneaking. Hmm. All right. You uh, come up and you basically rip uh, the seeds out of the back of this one. He's still up too, but he was in the same ragged shape as the one fighting the rhino man. It's, it, it was really hard penetrating the pulpy shell around him. Let's see. And um, pirate. Pirate, your go. Thinking engine. All right. Well, um, seeing uh, my new friend or old friend or acquaintance here, I'm just assuming I'll you guys were gonna work that out in the in the role play. <laughs> lash it out. Um, I guess I'll try to stab this thing with my knife. Take a hit down. Okay, I rolled a six, so that gives me a ten for roll versus. Unfortunately, that uh, does not beat him so oh, no. his, his spear takes a chunk out of you see. oh max damage mm. wait a minute I, get, I got armor all right so we're subtract subtract your armor from eight damage uh, I got, <laughs> i'm lightly armored so, so i subtract lightly armored from you take eight. seven seven stamina damage then oh, that's not so bad i got a whole bunch of that like yeah. 19. <laughs> I spent six trying to cast a spell, so you know. <laughs> Let's see. Um, and next round, uh, the goat. Your zombie goes. Oh, for real? Yep. He's gonna yeah. attack. Whichever one's the closest one. Uh, the the closest one is the one. to say the one fighting the the rhino man. All right. Uh, does it get flanking? <laughs> there is no flanking that I know of. Oh, no, I rolled a six, so I miss. No, you, yeah, it's an opposed roll. Oh, so six plus five. Oh, yeah, so 11. 
Hi. Um, actually, your zombie hits because I rolled very Ooh. poorly on the uh, posed roll. <laughs> I forgot I'm rolling against you. So yay! Yeah, uh, shut up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Mars mo- does it again. He's still doing the modest beast damage. Um, yeah, or no? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Moder- modest, modest beast. So, roll right, a d- so d6. Roll d6 and get a two. So, six that- damage. All right. Six damage. That finishes that pumpkin guy off. Yay. Next uh, round. Octopus, your, uh, your pumpkin soldier goes down. All right. Um, and there's still one that I can. Can I reach the one? And still attack that's uh, next. Yes, you can move in with and still attack on the one that's nearby that uh, the assassin and the thinking engine are fighting. Then I will move in and spear fighting with my spear for eight, 16. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, you win. <laughs> cool. That's impressive. I'm a spear fighter. I'm a guard, man. Well, I used to be. Don't forget, 12 always misses, though. Mm, I did not know that. I, I thought 12 would be a crit. 12 always misses on a roll under. Uh, double ones always misses on a roll over, right? Yeah, so, yeah double ones always misses on, a, on an opposed. <laughs> that is also max damage for another eight. All right, then that guy is finished off. Uh, the next card I drew is the end of the round token. So let me shuffle up real quick and we'll start over. So how many of the pumpkin things are left? There, there's one pumpkin soldier left. All right, so um, it is your go dinosaur. Sorry, how far away is the lone remaining pumpkin soldier? He is 20 feet. Um, how, what is that in meters? I think it's a move to get to him actually. Okay, uh, I do have a crossbow, but I will oh. presume I will have to load it. So I will load my crossbow. Shoot somebody. <laughs> shooting in the melee. Yeah, I don't think it actually differentiates, so you can just shoot. Oh, I Load can shoot. shoot. All right. Yeah. I will shoot it. I think the only is thing that I opposed read about or roll was... under? That is opposed, but it's versus his defensive skill, which is, um, I think, yeah, for these guys, it's just a skill roll. So. <laughs> All right. So I rolled eight plus five or plus six is um, 14. You shoot the pumpkin. All right. You really are one. <laughs> um, let's see. I rolled a three. That makes six damage six, on the crossbow. Six damage. All right. Is he uh, shooting into melee? He is not, and that okay. is that is a dangerous thing, by the way. That's very dangerous. <laughs> I was just reading that. Yeah, it's random who you actually hit if you're shooting into. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that Lamentations of the Flame Princess had the had a similar rule. They actually had a good thing too, because you could uh, aim, spend turns aiming, which would change the odds. This actually bit. has has that too. Oh, okay, they probably use the same thing. You yeah. basically hold your card and wait for your next card to be drawn. I, I mean, look in in BX originally, you couldn't you couldn't shoot into melee at all. Once some once a creature was in melee, you just lost the ability to shoot yeah. into it. So it's actually it, it doesn't look like if you aim, it helps to shoot into melee in this game. You just get to roll twice and take the best. But yeah. if you shoot into melee, you just roll randomly to see who takes the damage. Yeah, so you Oh so yeah, so anyway, lamentations like it just changes the odds. It would be like instead of being 50-50, it might be like two thirds to a third. So there's still a chance you could hit the, your ally, but you'd have a better chance of hitting the enemy. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so in this you have a better chance of hitting whoever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what right. a, what uh, a wild drew, wild game. I drew the goat token, so it is the zombie henchman's go if you want to have him close the different distance on his turn. Yeah, he'll uh, uh he'll charge. Alrighty. Oppose and roll. Well, no, okay. he can only, he can only move to get there. He, the, the, that pumpkin hasn't moved from its spot yet. Oh, so it's still um, yeah, it's that, still it, more than twelve feet away. Yeah. Okay. So it'll he'll have to close the distance this round. He'll close the distance then. All right. So can I yeah. save that roll? It was nice. <laughs> yeah. Octopus. Right, that's me. Um, um, all I could do is close the distance, huh? Yep. Sorry, I'm looking. I'm talking away from my microphone. You very much are. Yes, I'm sir. I'm sorry. I've got my character sheet over here. 
I guess I'll just close the distance. All right, you close the distance as well. Uh, I hope Todd takes a, an attack Ooh. on you guys. Can I throw my Can I throw my useless tiny helmet? <laughs> you know we need that helmet? Field of Dreams voice to go close the distance. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything for improvised. Uh, oh, I, I was it was a joke. I'm, oh, okay. I'm closing the distance. I know, but I am actually trying to see if there's anything for improvised. Yeah, it also case. says in the item description, useless helmet. Stop oh, yeah. trying to use so, it so much. Yes, you can throw the helmet. No, it won't do any damage. I'm, I'm trying to find useless helmet in here just to see if there's anything, any reason to actually have it. There's not. It's aesthetic. Pirate, it's your go. To cover up oh, your little bald spot. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that weird lump on your head. Um, can I use healing to restore stamina or no? Or is that only if I'm dying or someone else is dying? Let's see. Let me double check healing real quick. I think it's mostly just for like... Um, it's not for in combat medical use. Unless yeah, okay. you're trying to stabilize a dying person. Stitching somebody up or trying to do like a little field thing on them. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I will. Um, I might be I wrong. I guess I'll head towards the combat, right? I know. Okay. Everyone's close again. Yeah. Got my knife out. Thing's deadly. <laughs> all right. knife. But. All right, you guys all rush up on the pumpkin soldier. The pumpkin soldier gets to act. He chooses to fight. Uh, the the new arrival, um, <laughs> which is you, Matt. I'm afraid. So roll it. Roll versus his spear attack. And I had I just add my skill to that plus one uh, for no. my armor. What? Oh, I get minus one on the damage. That's what the armor yeah, does. Yeah, that's what the armor does. Roll your skill. Hey, I got a six and a five. All so right. that's uh, 15. 15? Oh, shit. We're tied. <laughs> <laughs> spend that luck. Are you going to spend some luck to try and break the tie? What? Well, if I if I, if I I tie, then nobody gets any, any damage, right? Uh, right. Let's but see. if I win, if I break the tie in my favor, then I get to damage him, right? Yes. Yeah. So if I lose the luck thing, then nothing happens, right? Or no? If if you don't use a luck to break the tie, nothing happens. Yeah, basically you guys have def- defended but each if other. I, if I test my luck and I fail, do I take damage then? No. You just lose the luck. All right, you- I'm going to try it then. So roll, what do I roll? 2d6? Yeah, roll 2d6 under your luck. Add or under your luck. Damn it. I was close. I rolled a nine. My luck's eight. All right. So, so your luck is failed. seven for the rest of the day. Um. Damn, these six, I have never rolled this good with these sixes. It's amazing. <laughs> I wish I had that. Sometimes I roll fireball with all the twos and ones, and threes. Air. You're good, Tucker. Yeah, I'm. Um, You're dead. That's right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm debating on getting up, but I don't have anything that I can do, so I'm going to continue to play dead. My zombies got it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and that's the end of the round with the demon token, so let me do a cover. All right, I got to take out the other two. Oh, that's so, right, because they are no longer with us. Uh, let's see. Uh, I draw the pumpkin soldier. So, pumpkin soldier. Okay, the pumpkin soldier uh, takes a stab at a spear at you, Rhino Man. Pose it. Okie dokie. I am opposing. You bastard face. Um, That's three plus eight because I am uh, opposing it with my spear fighting correct yes okay um, if that's what you're opposing it yes 11 okay all right uh, unfortunately you do not beat him so his spear does um, four damage to you so if you have Minus armor on. two I believe from my moderate armor all right so two standard 
I believe. I'm not entirely sure. I'm tr- still no, trying to find that's armor. That's how it works. That's how Modern it works. armor is. It's, almost, uh, it's, that it's, on it's real simple. Sheet. Light armor is one. Moderate armor is two. Heavy armor is three. Okay. There yeah. My, my skin is moderate armor. So I take two stamina damage. Yep. So I can only I can only vaguely hear what's going on, but I have heard that the, the combat's moved away from where I'm laying, right? Yeah. Then I will end that spell and just get up. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> the um I drew the next token and it's the zombie. It's your zombie henchman. Oh. Uh, All right. So I got to save that dice roll from last time. <laughs> <laughs> Our guy. Yeah, he, he's gonna uh, he's gonna attack. The, the last one. Probably, he's probably gonna win. We'll see. <laughs> Kill him. Fumble. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> two ones. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Uh, I was well, just he, looking he, at it. He's already getting punished by getting hit. So, uh, your zombie oh takes max damage from the spear. Oh, no. the zombie's gonna die again. Uh, that's exactly his stamina. However, we did give him one point of armor, so he is oh, at, that's right. He is so at seven. one stamina. Oh, right in his gut wound where all his miles of intestines live. <laughs> yeah, a, a bunch of intestines roll out. Like, you see some weird tools made of bones. Uh, oh, well, no, no, he's at zero. So, fumble, a roll of double ones in combat results, and the roller losing the exchange, and their opponent adding one to their damage roll. Oof. <laughs> oh, no. I, all right, well, then I think your zombie henchman is kaput. Yeah. I mean, does that one to your damage roll? Because you did max damage. So, yeah, that is going to be more damage in it. Yeah. Oh, no. We have one to the damage roll. That brings the damage up to 10. Yeah. So he's he's uh, <laughs> he's not dead yet, though, because the, other, the reason I stood up is because if I can get to him or anybody and heal before the end of the, the turn. Yeah. That's what the heal skill is for. That'll, yeah. that'll bring him back up to one stamina. Yes. So hopefully. Stabilize his unlife. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I need to stabilize his own life. Luckily, I have anti gauze. Save him. <laughs> He's only mostly dead. Crypty, <laughs> no! All right, uh, pirate, your go. All right, uh, so the pumpkin guy is still up, right? And I'm. Uh, yes, the pumpkin guy is still up and well, yeah, pretty injured from the initial um, from the initial. Uh, the uh, fucking arrow shot <laughs> only. My, uh, <laughs> my third hand will notice the dryness of my rhino- rhinoceros friend's skin and squirt out some fluid on it just for good measure. And I will try to stab Burr. it with the uh, <laughs> my knife. <laughs> yeah, it, splice that in. That's oh, where you splice oh, it. <laughs> oh, perfect timing. All right. So my knife. I do. Uh, I got two fives, so that's uh, fourteen. I roll like right. a boss tonight. All right, uh, then you win. Actually, roll your, da- your knife damage. All right, I'm putting these up. These are hot. These things are hot. We'll keep them for later. Make sure you say knife to see you. Have a knife night. Have a oh. nice day. <laughs> oh, okay, so that's f- I rolled a four, so that gives me two damage, which does here. not pierce its eye. Oh, damn it! I gotta get a five or better. Yep. Uh, your go, Todd. I got the dinosaur card. All right. So, there's I a... guess he 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 rolls up on the necromancer. Was hoping to go through his pockets and is <laughs> hard to hide his disappointment as the necromancer stands up and <laughs> looks around. So then, once he just again, sort of nonchalantly, kind of turns dead. his head, maybe whistles a little bit. <laughs> okay. Glad you're okay, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other actions? No, I, I I don't want to fire into melee, and oh, okay. uh, I, I figure they've they've got it in hand. All right, well, no it's way. your turn again. So what are you doing? <laughs> fire. fire away! I, I, fire I do away. kind of intently look the necromancer just in case he's going to have another heart attack and fall over. So I'm <laughs> just smelling him to see if he's actually dead. I, I don't well, have much to steal, but uh, <laughs> well, he smells dead. Pirates, it's your go. My turn again. Yes, it is. So it's like, oh, we keep the, trying to stab this bastard. That's the craziness of this initiative system. We got to get you a pistol. I need one. Uh, so that is um, 12 to hit. All right. Let's see if you he is able to fend you off. Uh, let's see. That's 8, 9, 10, 11. 
12. So, um... <laughs> tie again? <laughs> Another tie. I'm using my luck again, sir. All right. Not those. I, mean, I know I have. Let me find these dice. They've never... They've never made me happy. <laughs> so nice let me use them. <laughs> oh, damn it. One of them's still an unhappy. Uh, so I rolled an eight. I have a seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so no damage I know, happens. I six. Wait, did you did you beat the luck? Oh, no, no I, I rolled an eight. I have a seven, so All I right, needed that was, a... That was the end of the round. <laughs> oh, no, my zombie. <laughs> Oh. oh, no. Oh, that's right. Oh, shit. So I guess that means you don't... Yeah, you may not get a chance to get over there. Oh, uh, you might have to, like... I didn't think about no, that. No, I should have ran and tried dead. to save it. If the round ends and they're at zero, then the zombie is... Yeah, yeah I can't, I can't so. stabilize it. That's fine. Well, you, Looks on you, you get another one? already dead. Yeah, Aha, I mean. DM. Suck it. They gave me a spell where I could possibly make one, or maybe the body will explode. This game is weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You could, wait a minute. You could possibly make another zombie? Yeah. Well, it's your or go, least... unfortunately, since... Uh... It's my go? <laughs> yep. Try okay. It. Then uh, I am going to spend five stamina. Woof. Woof. Uh, me to half my stamina. Just angry. cut your hand open and believe me. <laughs> necromantic powers leak from me and shoot across to my uh, to crypty <laughs> and i will roll to try to uh post humus post humus vitality him <laughs> there's a chart that i have to look at you have to say fatality him yeah maybe okay okay that's a okay. 10 11 toward wait it was it just plus two for me oh this might be Bad, no matter what. <laughs> you gotta be under. No, no, so over or under. You have to roll two d six and then add your uh, vitality skill, which is one. So I got six. Sorry. Uh. Oh, so I add my my skill. There it is. Uh, I was okay. like, how how would I roll that high? So that's uh, 10, 15, 16. I was one off from being able to bring him back permanently, but the creature is animated and will last for 24 hours before literally falling to pieces. No, you have to get a fresh one, huh? <laughs> yeah. All uh, right. A 17 plus would have been perfect reanimation, but 13 to 14, the, the vitality is clumsily applied, causing the body to explode messily. A new <laughs> one will need to be found. Okay. Fortunately, we're in a... later. We're in an orphanage and there's lots of kids. So, <laughs> yeah. Aww. <laughs> Your go, Todd. I have one little arm. <laughs> and Sigurd's vague, vaguely disappointed that the uh, strain of casting that spell had, had no adverse effect on the necromancer. <laughs> <laughs> so he kind of just rifle his ha hangs his head and sort of spins his spins his knife in his hand. Okay. <laughs> Octopus, don't let us down. Nah, I'm gonna stab it with my spear. White is ones. Let's go. Oh wait, no, I don't. It's not um, a D sixty six. It's a two D six plus my skill. Correct. I don't <laughs> think you're gonna beat it. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna either. I rolled a two. A Nineteen. Three. All right. Is that a mighty blow? Huh? It, is zero that a mighty sixes? blow? It's a six and a five. Sixes. So no. it's gotta be two sixes. Okay. Yeah. So no, then, yeah, you win. Do the do the damage. Damage. Do the damage. That's neat. Uh, that's. <laughs> oh, it's four. It's four. Sorry. Four damage. You rolled yeah, a four. four damage. I rolled right. a one. And you oh. fin and you finish the sky off. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Take All that, right. pumpkin. The last pumpkin soldier uh, explodes into a heap of delicious pie feel filling. Can we scoop it up for provisions? Uh, I just try to get my bolt back. Sigurd just tries to see if he can find his bolt and all, all the right, pie yeah, filling. You, you dip, you dig, you dig around in the pie guts, past fresh seeds and pie. Um, what do you call that stuff? That, 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 that,